I'm about to pressure cook a whole butternut squash in the instant pot. Um, I thought I would film it to show you just how easy it is to do. Um, pressure cooking whole means that you actually get um, really easy to peel butternut squash and really easy to dice as well. Oops. So we're going to cook a whole butternut squash. This is a um, huge butternut squash. It wouldn't even fit on my six. So this is in the eight. Yes, that's going to fit. So this is super easy. What we, this is going to do is going to par cook the butternut squash. It's also going to make the um, skin super tender. So you could even cook it with the skin on. But if you don't want to use the skin, you can then just peel it so easily. You know how difficult it is to peel and dice a butternut squash when it's raw? Well, this is going to solve that problem. And I used to peel my knuckles because I'm quite clumsy when trying to peel um, a butternut squash because I find it difficult. This is going to make it so much easier. I'm going to show you how. It's so easy. All right. All we need is 250 milliliters of water. You can use more if you want. It doesn't have to be precise, but you do need to um, reach pressure. Right. The trivet is in place. Don't forget, these are the feet of the trivet and these are the handles. They're not the wings. They're not um, fit. So the trivet never goes like that because that would be very unstable. The trivet raises the um, food off the water so we can do a steaming. So, trivet in, butternut squash in place, lid all checked, the flow bath can move freely, that's the flow bath there, the ceiling ring is all in properly. We're going to put it in. To make sure that the ceiling ring is pro in properly every time, press it down following the circumference. The ceiling ring has this thing for, if you press it on one side, it comes out of the other. So do it a few times, make sure it's fine. Close the lid. We want to make sure that the simple this handle is pointing to ceiling because we're going to pressure cook. Now, we're going to press the pressure cook. I'm going to get you off there so you can see the screen. So we're going to press the pressure cook button. I'm going to do eight minutes because it's quite a big pattern squash is going to um, be say quite raw when I get it out, which is perfect. Right. The program has locked into place and it's now going to reach pressure. So we first have the initial um, heating up period. And then we, this, this is the eight. So this is flush with the um, lid before we start cooking and then it pops up a bit further, I'll show you later, a bit further up than the lid to show that it's at pressure. It has reached pressure. So, we're going to leave it there. Wait a second. And we're going to leave it to warm up and reach pressure and I'll show you later. A bit of a steam is starting to come through. It will take a little while for the flow valve to have enough steam to reach pressure. Uh, sometimes you will even see it um, try to get up and go back down, up and down, up and down until it reaches enough pressure. That's the equivalent of us humans trying to do to climb a mountain, for example, you know, or climb a little hill or climb anything. <laughs> sometimes you just need a little bit of extra strength and it takes a few tries. This is the same. The steam is getting stronger and you can see the flow valve trying to come up. Soon there will be enough steam to make the flow valve literally float up. Then the instant pot will reach pressure and the lid will be locked in place. And after a little delay there will be the pressure cooking. There we go, using a little bit more. Yeah. 
Et ça va m'en faire. So that's the eight queen's rich pressure. The flow valve is red and it comes up higher than the six is though. And now we will have a little delay. It will still say on on the screen for a little bit longer. And then the countdown will start. There we go, the spipped to indicate that the countdown is starting. This is a newer feature in the newer models. Um, the older ones didn't beep when at pressure, but this is really cool because it means that you can set your alarm and think, okay, I have eight minutes, I'm doing, going to do a quick pressure release, I'm just going to set an alert on my phone. Of course, it will beep again at the end to let you know it's finished. And the other thing that you can do if you know you're going to be doing a natural pressure release, and it's like 15 minutes into natural pressure release. Now you would do like 15 plus 8, 23. Set that 23 minute alarm on your phone to know when to get up. Cool, huh? It's finished. It's now on keep warm. You can tell it's on keep warm. First of all, because the keep warm light is on. But then there's also an L before the time. So keep warm comes up and it's been on keep warm for six minutes. I lost track of time. I was preparing lunch. And the L tells you that this is a keep warm time. So six minutes on keep warm and we're going to do a quick pressure release. You could leave it be on keep warm if you want it. Right, for quick pressure release, all we do is turn the valve from ceiling where it is now to venting, always reach from the side. Never up here, now, never anything up here that has your skin on it. That would be dangerous because the steam is going to shoot up. But it's perfectly safe and really easy if you do it from the side just flick it and i will move the foam away quite quickly because the steam otherwise is going to go on my phone all right ready let's go oh there's no steam left you know what the hint was right there the flow valve had already popped back down so what we have to do now is twist the lid to open it and here we go now very important we need to let it uh, cool down obviously before we touch it. I'm just going to leave it there. If you didn't notice, if you have a duo, see what I did there? This wing on your, on your, oh, sorry, I gotta get my words out, on your lid, slots in this hole on the handle, either of, of the sides, both sides have it, and you can put the lid there. It's not a hinge, just remember it is not a hinge but it holds your lid up. The advantage of this is that any condensation that is on the lid, you can probably see it, it's very dark outside today. Um, the light in the kitchen is really bad, but the, um, the liquid is already going down there. The liquid will go down there, all the way to the, um, see that hole there? The hole underneath the hole is the condensation collector. See, so that's, all the condensation from here will go all the way there. So we're going to leave the butternut squash now to cool down. You could take it out by so big and I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it there. Going to cancel, keep warm because I don't need it anymore. Cancel and I'll turn it off at the socket and leave it to cool down. It's cooled down loads because I lost track of time. So I'm going to get it out because now it's totally manageable. Oh, actually it's a sick warehouse. It's so dense, it keeps the heat in. So I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to show you how well it peels. You don't have to peel it because the skin is so soft. I can even dent it, look. Can you see how soft the skin is? Look, I can even do it like that and it comes off. I'm going to make soup with this one, so I'm not going to peel the whole of it because I can't just blend it, peel and all. But this is how amazingly well it will peel. I might just put it all when I'm at it. I'm allowed to change my mind, right? Um, 
Yeah. This is extremely easy. And once I'm done, I'm going to show you how it well it slices. I'm losing track of what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, so kind. You're welcome. Did you give me a bite? That's the little tapita for he wrote as I filmed this it's half term. So she's home. Right, there we go. And I'm going to show you how well it slices. So I filled it. I'm going to remove this bit here. I might actually just pop out. There we go. Um and now to show you how well it slices it slices so well that you'll be able to cut it like this see how well it goes in and this is with quite a big butternut squash it's still not fully cooked which means it's perfect for other dishes these um diced quite big pieces i can add it um like a vegetable stew or add it to anything like and pressure cook for three minutes and make a whole new dish it's actually brilliant from frozen as well so some of it i i will dice and freeze a portion for meals from frozen just with different um spices and herbs all we have to do now is scoop this and you could even use it like it's par cooked you could stuff it with um your favorite stuffing for it bolognese or ragu would be brilliant there with some halloumi or some feta and it could then go in the oven. So from here, you would also roast it and caramelize it. That would be lovely too. So just a few ideas. You've seen how easy it is. Um, bear in mind, I'm extremely clumsy and that was super easy for me to do. So for those of us who can struggle to peel and slice and dice a butternut squash, this is brilliant. I hope you enjoy this tip and let me know how you get on if you try it. Bye!